So now we're getting into some fun problems. What I have here is the polynomial f of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 13x minus 3. And that's not going to equal 0. Um, and with a 0 of x equals 2 minus the square root of 5. No, that's something else. Um, 2 minus the square root of 5. OK, that's correct. All right, so now. When looking at a problem like this, when I have a zero, and especially one that's going to be including an irrational number, the square root or provide an irrational number, I know that I'm going to have to provide the complex conjugate. So I know that if I know that if two minus the square root of five is a zero, then I also know that x equals two plus the square root of five is a zero, right? So because remember, that's part of your, those, comp, those conjugates. If you have one as a zero, the other one's going to be a zero. So therefore, what I can do now is I can multiply these to get a quadratic, or to get another factor, a quadratic factor, though that I can divide using long division to find my remaining factors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these as factors. So to do that, I have to subtract x minus 2 minus the square root of 5, and then times x minus to plus the square root of 5. All right? So what I did is now I just rewrote these as factors. So what I did is I set them equal to 0. And when you, uh, let's, let's see, you can just do it like this. x minus 2 minus the square root of 5 equals 0. And then x minus 2 plus the square root of 5 equals 0. Right? Because to get to zeros, what I did is I solved for x. So I put them onto the other side. Well, now what I'm doing is I'm setting them equal to 0. So now I can write them as factors. And once they're written as factors, I can multiply them. So now what I'm going to do is multiply them. But we come across something that's very, very important about using our algebra skills. By multiplying these, um, I can multiply these by using FOIL. But what's really nice about these is I can associate my variables are my terms a little bit differently. Rather than grouping the 2 minus the square root of 5 and the 2 plus the square root of 5, I'm going to group the x minus 2 and the x minus 2. And the reason why I do that is because if I was going to have these as a minus b and then a plus b, what you notice is a represents x minus 2. And b represents the square root of 5. Well, if I look at that, a minus b and a plus b, I know that's going to be a difference of two squares. So therefore, all I need to do is multiply my a's and then multiply my b's to find, to find the FOIL term. So therefore, what I'll have is x minus 2 squared minus the square root of 5 squared. Well, x minus 2 squared is going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4. And the square root of minus the square root of 5 squared, which is going to be um, just minus 5. Well, 4 minus 5 is going to be x squared minus 4x minus 1. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. By giving my two zeros, I'm able to find the factor x squared minus 4x minus 1. Now, that's very helpful because I already know two zeros. I already know x 2 minus the square root of 5 is 0, and x equals 2 plus the square root of 5 equals 0. But I need to be able, there's one more zero that I be, need to be able to determine. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to apply long division, because I can't convert this as a binomial for synthetic division. So now I'm going to use long division to find my remaining zero. So therefore, I have x cubed minus x squared minus 13x minus 3. All right. So remember, when using long division, we're always going to divide with our x squared term, but then whatever our um, quotient is, we need to make sure we multiply that by every term of our divisor. So x squared goes into x cubed x times. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 4x is a negative 4x squared. And x times negative 1 is a negative x. All right. Then what we do is we group our second term and we subtract the whole row. x cubed minus x cubed is 0x cubed, which is just 0 negative x squared minus a negative x squared. That becomes positive, so therefore it becomes 3x squared. And negative 13x minus a negative x. That's become minus a negative would become positive, so it becomes a negative 12x. And then I'll bring down the 3, which would be a negative 3. Now, I work to divide my leading term into the next value. x squared goes into 3x squared, positive 3 times. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times negative 4x is a negative 12x. 
and 3 times negative 1 is a negative 3. Then again, I group my terms and I subtract. 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0x squared. Negative 12x minus 12x, negative 12x is going to be a 0x. And negative 3 minus a negative 3 is just going to be, again, be 0. So therefore, we know we have a remainder of 0. So my final factor is x plus 3. And remember, our factors we set equal to 0. So if I set x plus 3 equal to 0 as a remaining factor to solve for my final 0 is going to be x equals negative 3. So therefore, the total number of zeros I have in this problem are 3. And you can determine that also with your degree of your polynomial. And the zeros are x equals 2 minus the square root of 5, x equals 2 plus the square root of 5, and x equals negative 3. Thanks.